Hello friends, how's it going today? Chelsea Face here. I wanted to make a quick little video for you guys. I have a haul I want to show you. I've been collecting some new manga that I plan on reading and a couple of regular books, but this is mostly manga. Um, a lot of this was used. I had to find some out of print series that I want to complete in my collection and reread them and see if I like them. So a lot of this is older stuff, but there's a couple of new ones. So let's just jump into it. So I guess first I'll just go over the regular books since there's only a couple of them. I found this really cheap. I don't want to promote the author and anything that she stands for, but I've always wanted to read them and someone had it for like two bucks, so I bought it. Then I got A Night in Halloween House. This is a shorter book published, I think through Amazon, I'm not quite sure, but this is a book written by a YouTuber that I really enjoy. We watch this channel called Fun House, and I talked about this in my um, November TBR. Elise Willems is part of a YouTube group called Fun House right now. She wrote a book and published it, and I really, really want to check it out. It's uh, A Night in Halloween House, written by Elise Willems, cover art by Adam McQuaig. McQuaig? And um, it just sounds really, really cute. I'll read you the back of it real quick, just so you know what it's about. You can go buy it digitally or you can buy it physically. I just wanted to have it physically. It's Halloween, the spookiest night of the year. Billy and his friends are trick-or-treating without parents for the first time ever. But things take a turn for the frightful when a series of escalating events force the kids inside Briarwood House the rundown and ramshackle residence that locals claim to be haunted. Can this ragtag group of misfits navigate bullies, the weird new girl at school, and survive a night in Halloween house? Brimming with nostalgia, a night in Halloween house harkens back to Halloweens of youth, a time before cell phones and the internet, when candy ruled supreme, kids played outside until the street lamps came on, and go campfire ghost stories were accepted as fact. Um, I think I paid like $15, $16 and it's just pretty much just, you know, nothing fancy as far as the print goes. And uh, it curls a little bit, but for a self-published book, I think it's going to be great. I'm very excited about this. The last book book I have is The Bone Witch. This is by Ren Kupiko. It's the author of The Girl from the Well. I've never read anything by this author or know a ton about this book. I just remember hearing Olivia Rizalate talk about it on her channel at one point and it sounded interesting. So when I saw it at a Goodwill for like $2, I had to pick it up. This is in great condition. It's a paperback source books fire, I think is the publishing. Yeah, full price, this is $10.99. So I got a good deal on it and I really want to read it. I don't know when I'm going to pick this up, but it sounds really, really cool. I'll read you the back of it too, since I've only got a couple books. T is different from the other witches in her family. Her gift for necromancy makes her a bone witch, who are feared and ostracized in the kingdom. For theirs is a powerful elemental magic that can reach beyond the boundaries of the living and of the human. Great power comes at a price, forcing T to leave her homeland to train under the guidance of an older, wiser bone witch. There T puts all her energy into becoming an Asha, learning to control her elemental magic and those beasts who will submit by no other force. And T must be strong, stronger than she's, she believes possible, because war is brewing in the eight kingdoms, war that will threaten the sovereignty of her homeland and threaten the very survival of those she loves. Lyrical and action-packed, this start of a new fantasy series by acclaimed author Rune Kapiko will leave you breathless. So this is, I think, the start of a new series. So we'll see if I like it. It's, how many pages is this one? It's barely over 400, like 400 and something pages. So um, I'm nervous because fantasy is a little hard for me to get into, but I think it's YA. I could be wrong. I'll have to look into that. But um, I've seen it in the YA section at Barnes & Noble. So I would assume it is. That's one that I picked up. Next, I picked up something for my husband. This is a light novel. Um, he already had the first one and he's finished it. It is the new um, Can't Fear Your Own World light novels by Taik Kubo and Ryoko Narita. I don't, I'm not sure how you say this first name right here, but they had it early at Barnes & Noble. It's already been published now, but it was like a couple weeks early when I bought this. And I was gonna just give it to him for Christmas, but I was worried he was gonna buy it on his own. So I just went ahead and give it to him. 
I got really, really excited just to give it to him. <laughs> but this is the second one and it's a lot thicker. It was a little bit more, I mean, but considering how much more text you're getting, it's not bad. But in the back, it says there's going to be a volume three. So that's exciting. He really, really is enjoying this series so far. And uh, he's already started it, as you can tell. He reads a lot slower than I do because he reads before he goes to bed and that's about it. I'll let you know if he likes them or not once he gets through them. He really liked the first one though. And he's hoping that um, we get to see, I don't know what character, but he's hoping that they get to see a certain character's um, Bankai. So, you know, nerdy stuff. I'm glad that he's enjoying these though. And as you know, I told you guys in my TBR that I'm going to be rereading the entire manga series of Kage Tora. I had only had, I think, volumes one through five previously from way back in the day, I think maybe high school, community college, when I started collecting the series, when it was still in print, I had to buy the rest of it pre-owned. So this is volume six through 11. That completes the series. This one is a ex library copy, which I would like to replace and then resell this one or something or give it away because I do want them to look the same. But if not, that's fine. I'll I won't be upset over having a library copy, but they are older. A lot of them have yellowed, but I'm honestly not that picky over stuff like that. So it doesn't really bother me that much. I just wanted to point that out. This series came out, I think in like 2003 is when it was published here. It's by Akira Sagami and it's about a ninja called Kagetora, who is this man right here. And I think they're high school age, like 16, 17. He is supposed to be protecting his Hime who is like the heir of a huge martial arts lineage and school. So she's going to be the teacher and the owner of this establishment if she becomes trained enough and is good enough and responsible. And uh, he's going to train her slash protect her in all of these martial arts. Like they have to be pretty well rounded. It's kind of astounding all the different martial arts that they want her to accomplish. It's a lot for a person. And she's not very talented, honestly. She's struggling and she's very clumsy and very loopy. So he's slowly falling in love with her and pretty much it's just a story about them training and falling in love over and over again and the shenanigans that ensue. So I'm enjoying it so far. I think I'm on volume five at the moment and I'm recording a vlog for it. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe so you can see that later because it's going to be really fun. I'm enjoying that vlog. I really like talking about manga series that are out of print and that no one talks about or maybe I personally had a lot of connections to them but I don't really see other people who were attached to them so that might be something I try to do more of if I can find them affordably because some of these are expensive and some of them aren't so it just depends on what there are but I just want to give them more attention and maybe someday they'll get another reprint but I don't know it's just something I really like to talk about. The next thing I got was another one that I'm trying to buy up all of the um volumes. I'm not sure if this one's out of print or not. I'm buying them used anyways because price is significantly different and they haven't yellowed yet and they're in excellent condition. Like none of these have any flaws on them. Um, I have volumes one through three of Arissa. So I got volumes four, five, six, seven, and eight right here. They were like less than four dollars a piece I think used through, um, I forgot what website I found them on, but they were pretty much from Half Price Books somewhere in Texas. Uh, they mailed them to me individually, which I ordered them all at the same time, hoping that they would just package them together because it saved me money on shipping, but they still sent them separately. So I feel like they got jipped out because they didn't ship them together, but it's beautiful art. The series is gorgeous. I don't know any other work done by Natsumi Ando. The art of this is gorgeous. I can't wait to finish it. I really, really enjoyed the first three volumes way back in the day, and then recently I reread them. But once I finish collecting the whole series, I want to do a reading vlog for you guys so that I can finally finish the series. I think it's like 11 or 12 volumes. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to look into that. I'll put it here on the screen whenever I make edit this video, but it's not too long. I enjoy a series about that length. It's pretty dark. It's a darker shoujo and uh, I can't wait to collect it all. It's beautiful and the spines look gorgeous next to each other. And um, I'm just really, really excited to finally start finishing off some series that I have. It's, it's something I've wanted to do for ages and um, I'm very, very excited about it. So they have like all these really pretty covers with the sisters on it. If you don't know, I feel like I've not told you yet, the story is about these two sisters who are pretty much twins, I think. I think that's what it is. Is it, are they twins? I think they're twins or they're just really similar. And one of them tries to kill herself and puts herself in a coma. The other one 
dresses up and pretends to be her sister to figure out why she would do this. She goes to school as her. I don't know how the logistics of that work. I'll have to, maybe they just like you suspend your disbelief, but um, it's very dark and very sad and very beautiful. Oh, it's the creator of Kitchen Princess. It says that right on the cover. So if you like Kitchen Princess, that's like a older series. Um, that's one I haven't read yet either. You know, you may like this. I don't know. I think it's darker, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm very excited to complete that series eventually. It's very, very beautiful. The next volume of manga that I got, I found on eBay for like six bucks and free shipping. Like this person was nuts for selling it like that because this is a different edition. This is Parasite Volume 1 by Hitoshi Iwaki. This is the edition that has um, Shinichi's face on it, which Shinichi is one of my favorite protagonists, like main characters of an anime. If you've never watched or read Parasite, I highly, highly recommend it. It is very gory and horror. It's scary and traumatic. So if you're not into that kind of thing, maybe miss skip out on it. But for me, it's fantastic. And I've wanted to read it since I watched the anime. So I have not read this yet, but the art is a little more traditional, but it's still gorgeous. And uh, I can tell that it's very stylized. Like the artist has their own unique style. It's very bloody and gory. But this is the volume that came with Loot Crate. What year this came out. But this was a Loot Crate exclusive edition. And I'm pretty sure it matches up with all the spines and the height of the other volumes. So I'm really excited to have this version. Because the original version just has the hand on it. And I don't know. I kind of wish they all were a little more different. They all kind of look very similar on the cover and I just don't prefer that. This is the one that has Lucy. Like there is a extra little story in this one about the artist who created Fairy Tale. They made their own little short story inside this universe like involving the parasites and stuff. So it's really really interesting. I'm excited to read that because it sounds silly. I'm just really, really excited to get this edition. And the person who sold this on eBay for like six bucks has raised the price. So I don't know if they just realized that they weren't making any money on this once they shipped it or if um, they just raised the price because they had less of them. But I got a really good deal on this. The cheapest I found this one lately has been like $12. So yeah, I got this for like nothing. So I'm very, very excited about that. The next thing I got was one that I picked up at Barnes & Noble when I picked up um, my husband's new bleach book. I wanted to get myself something because I'm spoiled and I wanted to spoil myself even more. This is Sweat & Soap Volume 1 by Kintetsu Yamada. This is a manga that I've heard so many manga tubers bragging about and saying how wonderful and beautiful and cute and smexy this is. It's a story about a woman who is very self-conscious about her body odor and smells and stuff and she works for this company that does perfumes and just smelly things because she likes the way it covers up her smell I think and she ends up having this guy who likes the way she smells and asks to come smell her every day so I, I think it's kind of a kink fetish kind of thing but it's not like gross at least that I from what I've heard um, but I'm a smell driven person so I feel like I'm gonna identify with him a little bit <laughs> I don't know. That's weird to say, but nothing weird about it. I'm very, very excited. I think it, it's going to be really, really fun and really, really cute. And I can't wait to dive into this. I've heard such good things. It is very large though. Like, I don't know why it's printed so much bigger, but like it's, it's wider. I don't know. Kodansha does that sometimes and I don't understand why certain ones are just bigger. Is it because they're adults or something? I don't know. This is rated OT and uh, full price it's $12.99 and I did pay full price for this one so there's only four of this one out but maybe I'll really like it. Okay the last thing that I have for this haul for you guys is one that I pre-ordered and I have never pre-ordered a manga I don't think. I don't think I have. I could be mistaken but it is volume 10 of Shortcake Cake by Sue Morishita. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This one's horizontal for some reason and none of the other ones are. I'm not sure why they made that decision, but I'm very, very excited. I don't want to look too much into it. <sighs> New manga is so good. The smell, I just wish I could encapsulate that into a candle or a soap and just put it all over my, my person. Um, this is a series about a character named Ten who is pretty much, she's not your typical shoujo protagonist, but she's not like 100% unique either. She kind of just tells guys how it is. And if she likes them, she tells them. And if she doesn't like them, she tells them. So she has this guy hit on her and she tells him, I don't like you really. I actually like this other guy. And then things switch around. People fall in love with people. People fall out of love with people. People become friends instead of, you know, 
love interests. It's very, very precious. And I'm really, really enjoying where the story is going right now. I don't know how many volumes this is supposed to be. I don't think it's going to be like a 20 or 30 volume series. It, you know, it doesn't seem like something that would do that, but we're already at volume 10. I'm wondering if it's going to be more like a 12-er or if it's going to be like, you know, a 15 or so. But if you know, let me know in the comments. I'm very curious if this has been announced how long it's going to be, but it's rated T for teen. It's Viz Media. I paid a little more than full price for this because it was a pre-order and sometimes it's just hiked up like that. But I couldn't wait. I could not wait for this one. I am in love with this series and the art is just precious. And I love these watercolored covers. It is one of the prettiest covered uh, manga I've seen in a while. So um, check it out if you're interested in a sweet kind of different romance, but also follows the, the formula a little bit. Um, I'm very, very anxious and excited to see how that series pans out. But anyways, you guys, that is it for this video. I have quite a huge stack here of books that I have accumulated. I wonder if I can get my thumbnail without dying. But yeah, that's, that's the haul for y'all. I don't know when I will get to every single thing in the stack, but we will eventually. And I thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you did by liking this video and commenting down below what kinds of videos you'd like to see in the future. And um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.